This video is sponsored by Squarespace. That is my one wheel. And it's probably one of the most fun, just like straight up toys that I own. So I was riding it around the other day and it got me thinking, could I build something like that myself? I mean, obviously not one that balances on a single wheel like that, but could I build a board capable of ripping around the city that doesn't have all the anti right to repair nonsense that Future Motion is known for? And that's when my video editor, Bryson, reached out to me to let me know that he actually has a wrecked electric skateboard. He got it from his brother who was almost hit by a car while riding it. Thankfully, his brother's fine. However, the board he was riding at the time is basically trashed or at least the deck of it is trashed. We think the electronic components are still functioning. So what we're gonna do today is see if we can salvage enough parts from that old board to make a new one. But it remains to be seen whether or not we can actually do that. So let's head to the shop and get started on this build. All right, so I think job number one on this build is going to be stripping down the old board and seeing what makes it tick and trying to figure out how we can transplant all these pieces onto a new deck. This will be interesting. Obviously, not everybody is going to have a wrecked board the way I did. However, the company that makes this board, WowGo, sells all of these electronic components as a standalone kit. And there's a number of other companies out there selling similar products. So there are plenty of options out there for us DIY enthusiasts. Okay, so it seems like the whole assembly of this thing is actually pretty simple. So at the rear, you have the drive wheels along with this control board here, which I guess controls the power delivery to it as well as the charging for it. Then you have this second lithium ion battery pack, and then you have this wire that delivers power from the battery pack to the motor. And then the front truck is just its own independent thing, and it's not really connected to the electronic circuitry in any way. So having it all laid out like this, it seems relatively simple, and I think this should be a pretty straightforward transplant operation. Which kind of begs the question, what are we going to transplant all of these parts onto? Well, I'm glad you asked because laid out in front of me here, I have a DIY longboard kit from Roar Rocket, which is actually a Toronto based company. Earlier today, I went to their warehouse and I picked up this longboard kit that is capable of making like nine different types of decks. It's actually kind of genius in terms of its simplicity. In your kit, you get seven layers of maple veneer. You essentially glue them together, put them on top of this styrofoam form, and then you put them inside of this vacuum bag where you suck out all the air, and that forces the wood to conform to the, uh, the mold underneath. Before we can dive right into this and see if it's truly as easy as I think it is, we have to do one little thing first. We have to modify this mold so that it's a little bit closer to this deck. See, this deck doesn't have a super aggressive concave on it, and I need the old components from it to fit on the bottom of this. So, in order to make everything fit together nicely, I flattened out the form a bit using my sander. And that's kind of the fun thing about these forms. You're free to modify them to your heart's content and make all sorts of different shapes with them. Okay, well, that was way easier than I thought it would be. We got our form with a little bit less of a concave on it. See if we can layer up some plywood. Oh, and one other little thing they told me to do at Roll Rocket is to, uh, cover the whole thing in tuck tape or some sort of packing tape so that the glue from the veneers doesn't stick to the styrofoam. Let's do that. This little step will ensure that I can use and reuse this form for many future skateboard builds. I think we are finally ready. So here's what we're gonna do. I want this to be the final shape of the deck. So I need to make sure that this veneer layer goes on first and goes down facing towards it because we will use this as an outline to cut it out later. I'm gonna put this on here. I'm gonna coat it in Type Bond 3 and then I'm just gonna keep adding layers and repeating the same process. Then I'm gonna stick the whole thing in the bag. It's a little bit nerve wracking because we are on a time limit. So wish me luck. Normally you get like 20 or 30 minutes to set wood glue. But because we're dealing with such thin layers, Roar Rocket advises that you get everything into the vac bag inside of nine minutes. So the race was on. I glued and stacked four layers of maple veneer, bundled them together using the provided elastics, and then shoved them into the bag. 
To save on time, I use my shop vac to pull the majority of the air out of the bag while simultaneously watching to make sure the bag itself didn't get sucked between any of the veneer layers. Then, to get the last of the air out, I switch to a manual pump that Roar Rocket provides with every kit. It's imperative that you get all of the air out of this bag for the system to work right, so I really work that pump. All right, that is our first vacuum form done. So we're gonna let this set for a couple hours. However, I will be monitoring it in case there's any leaks for the first hour or so. A little bit out of breath though, that was tiring. Well, Shop Zach catches his breath and we wait for that glue to dry, I would love to tell you about the sponsor of today's video. Squarespace. If you need a simple, streamlined way to get a professional looking website up and running in 2022, Squarespace has you covered. As many of you know, I have recently started a new podcast, Off The Cut, along with Eric Spensley, and everybody knows that you need a website for your podcast. So for that, we turn to Squarespace. Their website creation tool was so easy to use that I had a functional website up and running in an afternoon. They even had pre-made templates specifically for podcasts. From there, it was just editing text, moving elements around on the page, and inserting our own assets. They even handled registering the domain for us. If you're looking to start a website for your business, passion project, or next creative endeavor, I can highly recommend Squarespace. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and then when you're ready to launch, check out squarespace.com slash builds to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. All right, let's get back to building this board now. Okay, I let this sit for a couple hours, went and got some lunch, cleaned up the shop, and I think we are now ready to break the vacuum and see how our first vacuum press did. There we go. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. Pretty good. That looks like a very nice veneer job. I don't see any air gaps any way around it. Perfect. Okay, here we go. Another mad dash against the clock. And I have a very special surprise for the last layer too. I mean, not so much of a surprise for you guys at home, but a surprise for Bryson. You see, your standard skateboard is made up of seven layers of veneer. So I glued and laid up three more layers of maple. However, this wasn't going to be your standard skateboard. So I wanted to add a special eighth layer. Are you guys ready for the piece de resistance? We got this beautiful sheet of Formica that's the same color as Bryson's company's logo. Roar Rocket calls these their rocket lamp sheets. And the benefit of them is that they add some rigidity to the deck and make them more durable and resistant to water, which I figured would be handy for an electric commuter board. With the eighth layer in place, the procedure was the same as before. Put everything inside the vacuum bag, suck out all the air, and then leave it overnight. Or, in this case, a few nights. All right, everybody, it's a few days later and it is time to break the vacuum seal and see how our board did. I'm actually really surprised at how well this thing held the vacuum. It's still just as tight as it was before. Now that we got this guy out of that vacuum bag, we have to cut along the line here on the top of the deck. And you know, get this thing looking a little bit more like a skateboard and a little bit less like just a regular piece of plywood. Normally, the best way to cut out a skateboard deck is with a bandsaw, but I don't have one of those. So I used a combination of my miter saw, my table saw, and my jigsaw. And as you can see, I'm using the design printed on the veneer as a guide for all of my cuts. This specific kit does eight different shapes of decks, with each layer of veneer having one or two designs printed on it. That's why earlier I was so adamant about starting with the design that I wanted face down on the form. Otherwise, I'd have no line to trace with the saws. Oh man, that is looking really good. So that's as far as I wanna take it with the jigsaw, and now I'm gonna clean up all these rough edges behind me on the belt sander. Set up with a 120 grit sanding belt, I was able to dial in the last couple millimeters of each cut and give the whole deck a nice smooth exterior edge. Next, it was time to give the deck that classic rounded skateboard profile. So I threw a round over bit on the trim router and got to work. Oh man, 
every step of the way, this thing just looks better and better. I am really digging how this is turning out. Okay, so at this point, we had to take a quick break from finishing it, no more sanding. We have to install some hardware, and I think let's, uh, let's start with the truck, shall we? This part of installing the hardware was pretty straightforward. I used each of the board's components as a practical template to locate each of the individual bolt holes. Once the trucks were in place, I moved on to do the control board and then the battery pack. And then I flipped the board over and countersunk all of the bolt holes. This will be important for a later step, but for now, let's figure out how we're gonna connect the battery to the control board. Okay, so that's all of the easy holes done. Now, things get a little bit more interesting. Let me show you what I'm working with. So remember earlier how I said the drive wheels and the battery pack were two separate units? Well, we have to connect them using this wire. So I think what the plan is, is to drill a hole here to the other side of the deck, route a channel all the way over to this side, then drill another hole and pull it through. But that's gonna be a little bit tricky. We kinda gotta get this perfect on the first try because there's no other board to practice with. So this is gonna be pretty high stakes. Okay, so maybe drilling the holes wasn't that high stakes, but I did have to come up with an interesting solution for the channel. So here's the setup. I have this angle iron clamped right to the deck of the board the whole way across, and it's nice and straight. So what I'm gonna do is use that as a fence for my router. I'll set up the router along here, move it along so that it's following on the edge of the angle iron, and it should give me a nice straight line between the two points. I double check my clamps, set my router bit to a quarter inch deep, and then carefully cut my channel from one hole to another while being careful not to overshoot my mark at either end. Next, I had a personal request from Bryson to fulfill. The original board had a carrying handle cut into it, and he wanted one on this board too. So I broke out a hole saw, sawed a couple of holes in the deck, and then connected them using a jigsaw. Oh, and of course, I gave them a nice little roundup too. Now we are ready to do some finishing. So, in order to treat this board, we are going to use Minwax Helmsman Spar Finish. Uh, this is just a good, high-quality, oil-based polyurethane, good for outdoor finishes. If you're following along at home, feel free to use whatever finish you want, but I strongly advise you use something that's oil-based, as it's likely to hold up better long-term. After the first coat, I left the deck to dry for 24 hours, came back and scuffed it up with some fine sandpaper, did a second coat, and then waited another 24 hours. Oil finishes, what can I say? They dry slow. This is now feeling nice and dry, so I think we are ready to move on to assembly. Don't worry, the fun's not over yet. We still have a few little creative things left to do to this board. First, let's put it back together. As the instructions always say, assembly is the reverse of disassembly. Though I did tweak the original design a little bit by adding some hot glue to the wire channel. Hopefully this will keep moisture away from the wires and will give me a nice flat surface to attach the grip tape to later on. After that was done, I made sure that everything was plugged together securely, and then I tightened down all the remaining bolts. At this point, I would love to take this thing for a spin. Unfortunately, it's been sitting for so long that the batteries are dead on it. So while it charges, we are gonna do one of those fun little bonus steps that I alluded to a second ago. Bryson has a YouTube channel called Unbound Vision that he runs with a bunch of his friends and his brother Nick. So what I did was I went to a local sticker company and I had them print up the Unbound Vision logo on a sticker. And we are going to put that on the bottom of the deck in order to personalize it for Bryson. Lucky for me, the stickers that I ordered also came with these clear transfer sheets, so I was able to carefully align the logo on the bottom of the deck before sticking it down. Oh, look at that. That looks really nice. Hopefully this thing is charged up enough that we can test it now. We've got the remote control, so I guess you can turn this on like so. Yeah, that got that. And there's a power switch here. And is that it? Oh, look at that. It lives. All right, let's take this thing outside. I got my board, I got my camera. Let's go outside and see how this guy works. And, oh, right, I forgot, I live in Canada. All right, I guess we're testing the shop today. I just gotta reconfigure the shop a little bit so I don't kill myself. One second. Ugh. All right, let's see. Oh man, this thing has got speed. Oh, I just ate shit a little bit. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. 
man, this thing is fast. I'm giving it like 10% throttle and I am flying around the shop. I could see this being a legit way to get around town. Well, now that I've ridden this thing and I know that it works, I think it's time that we installed some grip tape on it. I'm slowly drifting away. Hold on, let me come back over towards you guys. There we go. All right, let's install some grip tape. I think before I start this step, I should probably say that I'm no expert in installing grip tape, but I think the process is pretty simple. Roll it on, trim off the excess. And uh, before I do that, I'm actually gonna rough up this surface a little bit with a uh, 220 grit sandpaper pad just to help with adhesion a little bit. This step might be a little bit overkill, but you know, it never hurts to add a little bit of mechanical traction to a surface before you stick something to it. When it was time to start installing the grip tape, I started at one end of the board and slowly peeled back the wrapper to adhere a couple of inches at a time. Then, once I had the board completely covered, I went around the edge of the board and stretched the grip tape around it. This gave me a very clear line that I could then use as a guide to trim off the excess. And as a final step, I used the rounded profile of a screwdriver to really press down the edge of the grip tape. This cleaned it up a bit and made sure that everything was as adhered as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have ourselves a completed skateboard here. I almost wish I could keep this thing for myself, but you know what, I promised it to Bryson. Actually, you know what, before we get out of here, there is one last thing I wanna do. So here's the thing about an electric skateboard. Directionality matters with this. There is a front and a back because it's only driven on one side of the board. So what I wanna do is take this leftover sticker wrapper and use it as a stencil to put Bryson's logo on the top of the board too. This way, when you want to know which way is forward on the board, all you have to do is look down and put your front foot somewhere near the Unbound Vision logo. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to get a perfect spray paint application here. There was a little bit of bleed over in a couple of spots. However, I'm hopeful that most of that will rub off after a few rides. Overall, I still think it looks pretty sick. All right, the paint's all dry on this thing, so I think the only thing left to do now is to take this to Bryson, see if he likes it. All right, so it is now, it's like a week after I finished the board. Uh, we've had some really nice weather the last few days, but today kind of sucks. And me and Bryson picked today of all days to meet up and for him to get his board. So looks like we're gonna be doing a little bit of skateboarding in the snow. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Let's go show you the board. Oh, oh, you put the Unbound logo. Oh, on I put there. the Unbound logo on <laughs> the top. Awesome. And I got it on the bottom too. Oh, the paint job. That's so awesome. You got the handle too. Got the handle, you requested oh the God. handle. So I knew that was important to you. All right, you ready to go rip? Yeah, let's All right. do it. All right, man, you ready to give it a shot? I am. We're like right down by the lake too. So you got a nice breeze coming off the lake. But we found this like relatively dry stretch of road here. If you compare it to back over this way, it looks much better. And just like that, he was gone. All right, I guess we're gonna go get on my board and catch up with him. I can't even keep up with him when he's riding. It's just too fast. It's way faster than my one wheel. So uh, we had to pull the plug a little early on filming because the boards were starting to get iced over completely and it was getting a little unsafe to keep riding them out there. So I think what we're gonna do is Bryson is going to take the board home and wait for a nicer day and then film some B-roll that you guys will see in a couple of seconds. Thanks so much. Man. Yeah, of course, I love man. the board. Yeah, good, glad. And uh, shout out your channel for the nice people at home. Yeah, check us out at Unbound Vision on YouTube. We make some like gear reviews and stuff, but we're looking to branch out. So, you know, stay tuned for that. Yeah, awesome. All right, everybody, see you in the next one. Peace. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and especially big thank you to Roar Rocket for giving me the board kit to make this board. And a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for supporting me in every single thing that I do. As always, I'll try to include some links in the video description for all the products I used as well as Bryson's channel, Unbound Vision. All right, Bryson, hit him with a good B-roll. See you in the next video. Peace.